After seeing Marvel Studios successfully set up their cinematic universe with the release of Iron Man, DC Entertainment tried to play catch up and hired David Goyer to make a film to build their own cinematic universe. Goyer then began work on a new Green Arrow movie, but it's nowhere to be seen on the upcoming release schedule. So here's what happened to Green Arrow Escape from Supermax. The year was 2008, and like I said, DC Entertainment was in a tough spot. They saw how successful the Marvel Cinematic Universe could be and decided they need to replicate it. At the moment, the Dark Knight trilogy was still in motion, so there was no room for another Batman movie. But they got the next best thing. David Goyer, who wrote all three Dark Knight films, was hired to take charge in the project based around Green Arrow. Goyer then hired Justin Marks to write for the movie and a full script was made. Green Arrow, Escape from Supermax, was given to the executives, and apparently they loved it. If you're unaware of the story of Green Arrow, here's a quick recap. Billionaire playboy Oliver Queen fell off a cruise ship and was found stranded on an island. With no choice but to survive, he assembled a bow and arrow to find food. He then assembled a green suit for camouflage. Over many years, he eventually became amazingly good with the bow and arrow, and when he came against a boat full of pirates, he was able to take down them all. He realized that he could use his abilities to serve society for the greater good and fight crime. Now calling himself Green Arrow. What are your thoughts, Oliver? I think the vigilante needs a better code name than the hood, or the hood guy. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. How about Green Arrow? Lame. Green Arrow Escape from Supermax throws us right into the action from the beginning. No origin story to be seen. It almost feels like it's a sequel to a film that was never made. The story also features a large array of B-list villains such as the Icicle, Gemini, and the Pied Piper, but had cameos from A-list villains such as the Joker, the Riddler, and Lex Luthor. The entire script is available online with a simple search, so here is the story of Green Arrow, Escape from Supermax, summed up. We're introduced to Oliver Queen by his lawyer and childhood best friend Will Hackett at a dinner in honor of all the social work Oliver Queen has done. He's compared to a modern-day Robin Hood for Queen Industries' efforts in battling organized crime and corporate fraud. This speech is then interrupted with the introduction of the attack on Colonel Talib Kali, the officer in charge of the controversial Checkmate Initiative, which is a government operation about getting rid of all mask vigilantes like Green Arrow. Queen, about to give his big speech, is listening to police band radio when he decides to ditch the party and go fight some crime. Wearing his classic Robin Hood suit, he investigates Checkmate HQ and discovers the dead body of the colonel, right as the SWAT team discovers him, hovering over the body. Trying to get away from the misunderstanding, Green Arrow is led to the rooftops, where he's ultimately captured by the police chief. Of course, Green Arrow's trial is a fiasco. While the city's district attorneys have been anxious to capture the vigilante for a while now, and while the law enforcement may not be taking a shining to the idea of a masked archer stealing their thunder, the citizens of the city love him. He protects the people that live in the slums. He's their symbol of justice. This presents a problem for the judge in charge of the case, as he can't exactly sentence the guy to death. And they can't hold a renowned escape artist like Green Arrow in a normal prison. The judge then sends Queen to the Supermax Penitentiary for metahumans. What's terrible about this is that most of the supervillains that have been sent to this unique prison are in prison because of Green Arrow. Yeah, things aren't looking too bright for Oliver Queen. The rest of the script is about Queen trying to survive super criminal prison life while trying to figure out a way to escape so he can clear his name. When Green Arrow is transported to the prison, he's implanted with a computer chip called a Parallax device. He's renamed to Prisoner 9242 and the warden is Amanda Waller. And she shows him that should he misbehave, she can render his body useless and send him into a world of pain with the push of a button. So does that remind you of anything? It's almost the exact plot of Suicide Squad. Villains teaming up, but they're implanted with a device to keep them in check. Although this particular story is very different with the prison escape and all, you can definitely see how it influenced the story for Suicide Squad. We're actually going to hear more about how this movie affected the writing for Suicide Squad later, but I think we need to understand the prison Green Arrow is in. Supermax. Justin Marks, the man who wrote the script for Supermax, explained the prison in an interview with MTV. It had to be the kind of thing that was a character in and of itself. We're in a world where instead of just trying to contain a guy who's really big, you're trying to contain a guy, in the case of Icicle, who can freeze things. What kind of cell would a guy like that need in order to have this powers neutralized? So, as you can tell, each cell is equipped specifically to deal with the criminal's powers. Like Marks mentioned, the supervillain Icicle is kept in a glass cell that is kept at high heat to neutralize his powers. In the jail, all prisoners are categorized by their level of threat. Green suits are mortals, and Queen learns that there aren't many of them in there. 
Blue suits are geniuses who are doped up on the counterbalance that keeps them dumb and drooling. This is where we see a cameo from Lex Luthor. Orange suits are metahumans, the guys with the powers. Queen is eventually thrown into solitary confinement for six weeks due to some misbehavior, and it's in here that he begins to lose hope. But it's also in here that he makes a friend. There's another prisoner named Hartley Rathaway, or the Pied Piper, who can control all creatures that can be manipulated by high sonic frequencies. He's interested in escaping, and he forms a friendship with Queen by communicating with him through ants. After they team up, the escape is on. They begin recruiting the team and formulating their plan. Even though most of the team members hate Green Arrow, they need him to escape. We get quick flashes of their history with Queen, and we also get enough characterization to make us care about them. Many of them have an emotional reason for escaping this prison, and like any good men on a mission story, not all of them make it. It's also interesting because much of the conflict is generated from Queen having to work together with criminals. And when he actually begins to see that some of them are not horrible people, just men and women that have made mistakes and want redemption, it's hard not to root for everyone involved. Eventually the plans seem to have failed, but at the last second Green Arrow escapes and is able to out the Supermax prison as abusive to its prisoners, getting the entire jail shut down, and the warden, Amanda Waller, sent to prison. The film ends with Green Arrow questioning his morals, since he essentially saved every single supervillain in the DC Universe. And that's the story of Green Arrow Escape from Supermax. The main complaint many people have is how low the stakes are for the film. No end of the world plan or risk of death for any major characters, but honestly I'm completely fine with that. When every single film has the highest stakes possible, then it's lost all of its meaning. We all know that New York City is never going to be completely wiped out and the world is never going to be taken over, but something as small as a prison staying open and torturing its inmates can absolutely happen. For example, it's what makes the fairy scene in The Dark Knight so great. We know the Joker won't kill everybody in Gotham City, but it's entirely possible that Batman may not be able to stop the Joker from killing the people in the fairies. When the stakes are more believable, it makes the film better as a whole. After reading the script, it honestly seems like it would be better suited for a Batman film. Seeing Batman escape from a supervillain's prison could be amazing. There are rumors that this may be the story of Matt Reeves' Batman film set for release, but of course we don't know this for sure. So let's get into why the movie was cancelled. When David Goyer gave the script to Warner Brothers, they definitely liked it, but it just didn't seem to be enough. David Goyer discussed this exact thing with the website Den of Geek in an interview about what happened to Supermax. The executive on it was really visionary, but the higher-ups, none of whom were at Warner Brothers anymore, just thought at the time, you know, we just want to make Batman and Superman movies. We don't want to make any other characters. But this was before Marvel had really taken off, before more obscure projects like Guardians of the Galaxy or Ant-Man or things like that had huge success. It's natural that eventually someone was going to make a villain movie, so that's just what happened. So, at the time, the executives at Warner Brothers didn't necessarily believe in many of the characters except for Batman and Superman. They didn't think the general audience would watch any of their heroes. Until, of course, they saw that they needed to set up a movie universe with more than just Batman and Superman. In a way, Green Arrow Escape from Supermax was ahead of its time. Back then, movies like Suicide Squad would have never been picked up. But if this Green Arrow movie may have been pitched today, then it certainly had a much bigger chance of being made than back then. When interviewed about how Warner Brothers had changed, David Goyer had this to say. It certainly was like this oddball project at Warner Brothers at the time. They were like, even though the script is good, why would we make a movie about a bunch of villains? That makes no sense. So in the end, this Green Arrow movie was seen as too out there to be made. And over time, David Goyer just stopped hearing updates about the Green Arrow script. And eventually, it faded. I can't see this film coming back in the form that it was originally written in. Mostly because Suicide Squad has already done major parts of the story. It's unfortunate, since it could be a great idea for a standalone film. But with no Green Arrow seen in the release schedule, looks like we're gonna have to wait for Oliver Queen to make his big screen debut. Might make me blue, oh.